Hello my dear jewelry lovers. Today I want to tell you an interesting story about a brand that is on everyone's lips, even those who do not wear jewelry. This company, Bulgari, was founded by Constantine Satirios Bulgaris, 1859-1932, who Italianized his name to Sotirio Bulgari. His career in jewelry began in Epirus, Greece, before he moved to Corfu in 1877. He later moved to Naples and finally settled in Rome in 1881. Three years later he opened his shop on Via Sistini, which was later replaced by a flagship shop on Via Dei Condotti in 1905. The Bulgari signature is often spelled Vulgari, using the letter V instead of U, reflecting the classical Italian alphabet. Bulgari expanded before World War I, opening shops in San Remo, Sorrento, and Naples, but the main focus was always on Rome where the company became world-famous in the 1930s. In 1930, Bulgari created a diamond tiara for the wedding of Prince Umberto of Italy and Princess Marie Jose of Belgium, and its famous clients included American tycoons Robert Learman and Frank J. Gould. But let's move on to look at one of the masterpieces of jewelry art, the Trombino Ring, which translates as a little pipe, one of Bulgari's most successful and long-lasting models. The first version of this model appeared in the early 1930s, and instantly gained popularity thanks to the fact that it allowed the gemstone to show its beauty. The neck of the Trombino ring featured a wide band of diamonds in a pave setting, transitioning into a horizontal line of baguette-cut diamonds. A classic example of this iconic style was a 14.38 carat Burmese ruby, as seen in the photo above which sold at Christie's auction in Geneva for 823,500 Swiss francs in 2017. One of the most famous Trombino rings was the one Elizabeth Taylor purchased in 1971. The image below shows a sugar head, sapphire weighing over 25 carats that sold at Christie's auction in 2011, for $866,500. Christie's also offers many examples of this ring with prices ranging from £20,000 to £50,000. Bulgari began to attract international attention in full force in the 1960s. Sophia Loren was captured wearing an important diamond necklace from Bulgari at the 1961 Can Film Festival. Gina Lolo Brigida adorned herself with emerald and diamond jewelry at the premiere of The Sound of Music in 1965, and Princess Salima Aga Khan became a regular customer. When her collection was sold at Christie's auction in Geneva in 1995, it included 18 lots from Bulgari. In 1962, when Elizabeth Taylor starred in the film Cleopatra Outside Rome, she found Bulgari simply impossible to resist. One of the most famous pieces of jewelry from this period was the magnificent emerald and diamond necklace that Richard Burton gave Elizabeth Taylor as a wedding gift in 1964, pictured above. It sold for $6,130,500 at Christie's auction in 2011. Taylor's matching earrings from the same period were also of high quality, and went under the hammer for $3,218,000. In 1962, the Italian government organized an exhibition in Paris, featuring 75 Italian jewelers to celebrate the opening of the Italian Cultural Institute. Up to this point, Paris had dominated design and production, but Italian jewelers were determined to bring new elements to the art of jewelry. Bulgari was a leader in the use of diverse color combinations and bold jewelry. The company paid less attention to the intrinsic value of gemstones, focusing more on their visual impact. Diamonds were used sparingly, partly to keep costs down and partly to allow colored gemstones to take center stage. In the early 1960s Bulgari created the Giardinetto brooch series, allowing for a wide range of color combinations and gemstones, whether cabochon or calibrated cut. It was this explosion of color that defined Bulgari's style between 1955 and 1995, and today it is these iconic models that are fiercely fought over at auction. Such pieces also remain a key element of contemporary Bulgari design. The Bulgari Serpenti bracelet watch is a unique creation that epitomizes the symbolism of the snake in different cultures. In some cultures, the snake symbolizes fertility, while in others it symbolizes strength, eternity, and seduction. In ancient Crete, the snake was considered the guardian of birth and rebirth, thanks to its ability to shed its skin. Bulgari first introduced stylized curved snakes in the late 1940s, but the technique was not perfected until 15 years later. 
the secret to the unique flexibility of Bulgari Serpenti bracelet watches lay in the white gold, or steel spring inside the metal band of the Tubogas coil. The first models released in the 1960s were most often made of yellow gold, with diamonds on the crown and tail. The Bulgari Serpenti bracelet watch worn by Elizabeth Taylor in the film Cleopatra included a diamond head with pave and emerald eyes, which became features on subsequent versions. Many Serpenti bracelet models also included a hidden watch in the head of a snake, whose dial opened from beneath a hinged lid. The movements for these watches were provided by leading watchmakers such as Jaeger Lacolta, Vacheron Constantine or Audemars Piguet, and the dials came in a variety of shapes. Enamel watch examples are carefully crafted, the scales created by hand from gold leaf, then carefully joined at the center. Early models wrap the arm once or twice, but later examples often utilize the twist design, wrapping the arm up to seven times. Bulgari snake tradition continues today, including that head over tail snake watch introduced in 2015. Bulgari introduced a unique line of jewelry in the 1980s called Monite, including necklaces, bracelets and earrings using coins, which became one of Bulgari's most recognizable and unique designs that could not be copied by other manufacturers. This range remains one of the most enduring and popular of Bulgari's products. The idea of incorporating coins into jewelry is not new, and there are many examples of this fashion in ancient Rome and the Byzantine era. In the 19th century, Italian jewelers such as Costelloni and Giuliano also incorporated Roman gold and silver coins into their bracelets in a neo-archaeological design style. Bulgari, embodying its respect for its Greek roots, preferred to use the Athenian tetradrachm, a silver coin equivalent to four drachmas, circa for 20 BC, with the head of Athena on one side and an owl, symbolizing wisdom, on the other, as well as a tetradrachm featuring the head of Alexander the Great. Although Bulgari incorporated coins into its jewelry in the late 1930s, it was not until the 1980s that the company began mass-producing necklaces, bracelets, and sometimes earrings using coins. Ancient Greek and Roman coins, as well as 18th and 19th century Italian coins, were popular, as were cameos made of lapis lazuli, carnelian, and sardonyx. In the same 1980s Bulgari introduced another successful line of jewelry called Parentesi. Responding to the need for comfortable and stylish jewelry, this design was modular and could be used as both formal and informal jewelry. The first Bulgari Parentesi jewelry was introduced in 1982 and featured three elements, one in the shape of an hourglass, one in the shape of a bracket, and another placed in the cavity of the bracket. This modular jewelry could be easily adapted to different sizes by simply removing one or more elements. Which of the collection is your favorite? Write in the comments.